Ladies and gentlemen, I greet you peace and grace. You're listening to WHGE 95.3 FM, your one and only Black-owned, Black-operated news information and advocacy station for the state of Delaware, the city of Wilmington, and perhaps even the world. Your thoughts, your viewpoints are important to us. So please give us a call. Let us know what you're thinking about our reports. That number is 844-944-3953. 844-944-3953-WHGE. Give us a call. Let us know what you're thinking about what we're discussing today. I'm Rochelle Wilson. Here for Make Some Intelligent Noise, the movement for equal and systemic justice under the law. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, w I just want to say there's a lot to talk about. So let's get started. As I stated on Rochelle Wilson, make some intelligent noise, the justice movement for equal justice under the law across the board systemically. And I want to start off, there's quite a few uh, announcements and some news that's going on, and I definitely want to talk to you about it, but I love for you to chime in. So let's start off with what I thought was most important for today. Uh, and I want to tell you, there's a lot of buzz going around the 2024 elections. All right. Uh, people are, are preparing their, they've got their hats in the campaign. They have thrown their hats in and they are ready to take that next step and become elected officials, public servants for you and I. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, we, the people, we, the people, must stand for justice because we can, simply because we can. So uh, the 2024 elections are coming, and there's quite a bit of buzz right now thinking about a potential civil war, civil unrest here in America. Uh, the attempt to overthrow the 2020 presidential election, it failed. But insecurity, insurrection, anarchy, uh, mutiny, it still looms. Fear is um, mounting in the country that could explode in the next two years, uh, depending on the results at the voting booth. And that means Trump. So, you know, racism and unrepentant white entitlement uh, supremacists are a part of the mainstream politics and so important. And they're such an important part of the ideology of millions. And so uh, quite a few folks would like to see Donald Trump uh, back in the White House, you know, and I have to say, I believe that many of those people are indeed uh, the the unrepentant white entitlement types. Uh, they want to see Trump back in office. Now, remember, Trump is accused allegedly of, uh, you know, having quite a bit a big part uh, that was played in that insurrection on January 6, 2020. Uh, it said that Trump actually sort of ignited that entire resurrection on the Capitol. And and he's still being, you know, there he's still going through the court systems uh, to, to figure all of those parts out. Right. So, you know, he's got quite a few legal problems right now. And of course, there's some new reports. Uh, some women have stepped forward saying that he sexually assaulted them. Uh, one in a in a clothing store, in a dressing room of a clothing store, and others are, are, are coming forward. Is it true? Is it not true? Who am I to say? I wasn't at the clothing store. I haven't had an opportunity to interview either of them personally. So I can't say what's real and what is fabricated. What I can say is that Donald Trump, former President Donald Trump, uh, definitely keeps his name in the buzz. He really keeps his name in the buzz. And um, there, there, 
are a lot of folks, you know, analysts and people who deal with this sort of thing each and every day. They say that President Trump was a key figure uh, and accused as a conspirator of the in insurrection catalyst and others responded uh, during the 2024 presidential election. When that comes, we're not sure, we're not positive that there won't be some more of that if we don't elect Trump back into the president's seat. Uh, we do know now it's confirmed Biden will definitely run for a second term. Uh, he wants to stay in that seat, uh, but it definitely could be trouble, uh, trouble, trouble that could explode into an all out civil war, the us against them sort of mentality. And, you know, I've got to say, uh, just take a moment out as I say this, which is really, it's kind of horrifying news to think about that I'm, I'm reporting, but it's very real uh, and it's information, it's news that we need to be made aware of. But I've got to give a shout out, bravo shout out to uh, Timeless Thomas, Big DZ as you know him, right? Because uh, the report that he did right before mine was all about recognizing your body, uh, paying attention to your body, any symptoms, your body will tell you what it needs if you're thirsty, your throat gets dry, and you know that you're thirsty. So your body will tell you what you need, but you've got to be in tuned with it, and you have got to pay attention to what your body is communicating to you. And I thought that was such a profound uh, statement that I just had to dovetail off of that and give a shout out to my friend and yours, Timeless Thomas. And I can't say Say it the way he does, but it's something like this, Big DZ. <laughs> so we love you, Big DZ, and we appreciate you tremendously. Uh, so getting back to other news that's taking place, you know, uh, you know, there's just so much that's going on. And in these elections, we know here in the state of Delaware, uh, Matt Meyer, Newcastle County Executive Matt Meyer, has definitely put his hat in uh, for the governorship here uh, for the state of Delaware. And there will be others who will also put their hat in that ring. Uh, we're just waiting for them to make the official announcement uh, before we move any further down that road. But there's quite a bit of buzz about who else will be putting in their hat for the governor for the state of Delaware as we move forward to the 2024 elections. Also, we know that Velda Jones Potter is running for the mayor, the mayoral seat here for the city of Wilmington. And uh, it's really up to you and I, the voters, whether or not we will put her in that seat. So, uh, is she a good candidate? That is a matter of opinion and perspective. Let's look at the record. There are some people who will look at the record and say, uh, you know, maybe she's made some terrible mistakes in her past political career. Let him without sin cast the first stone. That's all I can say to you, ladies and gentlemen. If you've never made a mistake in your whole life, uh, then you really should be somewhere in the clouds with Jesus, wherever that is, all right? Uh, but for the most part, Velda Jones Potter is putting in her hat for the mayoral seat. Uh, we're not sure yet. It hasn't been announced, to my knowledge, that Mayor Michael Przicki will run again or will he graciously step to the side. It's not yet uh, known, but I'm telling you, in regards to the presidential race, the presidential race, we are concerned, we being the analysts and myself, uh, that Donald Trump's supporters may come out in groves if he is not reelected as president, we are concerned that they will begin a riot, an insurrection, uh, an all-out civil war, because it'll be us against them. All right? And I don't think it's going to be pretty. I think it'll be very, very ugly. But uh, it is what it is, and we'll just have to keep our eyeballs on it and see which way we go from there. So, you know, also many of us have been watching the news and we know, so I want to give a, a, a special send my heart and my prayers, my love energy. I want to radiate that out to all of the families uh, in Southern America. They are surviving the at-risk 
risk zone. That's Florida, Missouri, Mississippi, Iowa, Georgia, um, and uh, even balls of hail will be may or perhaps potentially will be hitting uh, Texas, and they're flooding from the weekend water, the rain, rain, rain. And I've got to tell you, all of that is directly related to the climate change. It is the one of the number one reasons for these storms is climate change. And I've got to tell you, I've said it more than once, and I'll probably continue to say it. I, I can't see myself as uh, shutting up about it. Cows. You know, you love your milk and you want your dairy products and your butter and uh, whatever else comes from cow and your all your cheese steaks and your hamburgers and your steaks, filet mignons. You want all of that, but it's important that you understand that cows, especially dairy cows, are causing a large super duper large amount of the methane emissions, uh, the greenhouse gases that are destroying our planet. And ladies and gentlemen, there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere for our great grandchildren or grandchildren to run. It's not like, oh, well, it's happening here. So let me just hop on a plane and go over there. We're talking about the entire planet Earth is being destroyed uh, for thousands of years of damage that we humans have done to it. And finally now, people, and thank God our young people, are coming to the rescue in an attempt to save this planet. It's the only planet Earth that we have. So we've got to save it. And one of the ways to do that, obviously, we hear of it all the time. Recycle, recycle, recycle. Plastic is the enemy to Mother Earth because it doesn't break down. It's not biodegradable. So plastic is, is a terrible enemy for planet Earth. The carbon dioxide is also killing Mother Earth. And the cows with the uh, emissions of, of methane, they're certainly not helping. So, you know, we, it's the elephant in the room that no one wants to talk about, but it's extremely real. It's very real. And, and it sounds almost depressing uh, to have to talk about it, but how else are we going to be well informed and begin to do our part to save this planet and whatever we can for our posterity? How are we going to do that if we don't have these conversations? Ladies and gentlemen, if you love your family, your grandchildren, you want to see great, great grandchildren, then it starts today. We must begin to do our part. Each one of us has a little part that we can play in saving this planet and the overall uh, larger spectrum of things. And as I began, uh, you know, you love your dairy products, your milk and your butter. I've got to tell you, you know, I, I love butter on my toast. Uh, I do. I really do. But you got to think about it in terms of milk. Human beings are the only species on the planet that will drink another animal's milk. Typically, when you are finished breastfeeding from your mom, that's it. You don't need any more milk. The calcium and vitamins that you need are all in the sun. You just need to get out into the sunshine. You don't need to drink cow's milk. It, many of us, uh, if you're melanated anyway, we're lactose intolerant. So we don't need it anyway because it does real funky things to our inner parts, our intestines. Right. We can't handle it. But all human beings have gone cuckoo uh, for Cocoa Puffs. Right. When you're drinking this milk, you're the only animal, the only species on the entire planet that will drink another animal's milk. Cows do not drink goat milk. Uh, goats do not breastfeed from human women. When you are finished with the breastfeeding process, however long that may take, and it varies mother to mother with each and every individual child, but when you're done with that part, that's it. You're not supposed to, by nature, go and drink another animal's milk. If you need vitamin D and calcium and all of these other uh, nutrients, you can find them in nature in the sunshine itself and in certain plants and vegetables and fruits uh, that we will digest. 
don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, cows are, uh, they're so cute, right? But they're, they're waste. The emissions that come from the waste of the cow is killing the planet. So we've got to get rid of the cows, reduce the amount of number of cows that are here. And I can't lie to you, uh, some dairy farmers are now really trying to be more proactive. And so what they're doing is taking this manure from the cows, right? <laughs> um, and uh, generating it under certain conditions, such as storing it before it can be further used for fertilizing crops. On many of the farms, the, the manure is stored in water, gas type vessels or lagoons that promote the, pro the production and capture the beneficial methane so that it can be recycled and reused actually to put into our cars as gas for our cars. But I'm telling you now, we need to get electric. Uh, if you have the money saved up, you can go get yourself an electric car. We've got to get some of these gas cars off the roads. We're killing the planet. And each one of us can do our own part. If you don't have the money to go and get an electrical car, that's fine. Ride share. Share a ride, catch a ride with someone else. So instead of having four cars on the road at the same time, we can only have one with four people. All going to the same place. Let's ride share. We've got to do something and we cannot ignore it as if it's not happening. It's real. It's real. Climate change is real. And we are experiencing that through these thunderstorms and tsunamis and the earthquakes and snow. Who's ever heard of snow in California in a hundred years? They had snow beyond their doorways. They couldn't get out of their front door because the snow was covering it in a certain part of California. Now, if that's not climate change, ladies and gentlemen, then please explain to me what is. Our glaciers are melting at unproportional rates and every time a glacier melts guess what ice what does ice do when it melts it turns into water and what does water do when you continue to add water to it it rises so our ocean and river levels are rising and what is that going to do for all of us who live on the land if the water continues to rise it's an uncomfortable conversation and, and very few of us uh, are excited to, to talk about the gloom and doom of, the dis of Mother Earth just being destroyed. Just poof, the sun burning us all to hell. We don't want to talk about it. But if there's ever going to be a chance, maybe not for you and I, but perhaps for our grandchildren's grandchildren or their children, we may be able to save them. So if you love your family, if you care about even any of your posterity, please do your part. Whatever small, minute part you can do, do your part. It matters and it is appreciated by Mother Earth and all of her inhabitants. And that's you and I. That's you and I. We are the inhabitants of Mother Earth. And if we don't cool her down, take some of these layers and layers and layers off of her, she is literally going to implode, to burn from the inside out. And that means everything on her will burn as well. It will burn fire. Who wants to burn by fire? So let's do our part. Let's save planet earth, all right? We've got to do it. It's very important. So uh, moving on from there, I'll tell you, if the planet doesn't implode or destroy us uh, by fire, I tell you, I'm not sure what's happening with Russia because they have sent another missile. Russia has once again sent a missile to, that hit Ukraine and the apartment complex. It hit the apartment buildings while the civilians were sleeping, killing children and non-military personnel. 
the American government, of course, that's us here. Uh, we are kind of shaking our heads, but keeping a bit of distance between us and Russia in order to avoid a war between the United States of America and Russia. And of course, China would then jump in that. China backs up Russia. So China's going to, you know, they're going to come to the aid of Russia if we start fighting uh, with Russia, if America fights Russia. And don't forget about nuclear war and nuclear weapons. You know, when you look at what's going on in the world today, if it's not one battle, it seems to be another. But ladies and gentlemen, they're very real. They're very prevalent. But we, the people, each and every one of us has the power to stand up and do that which is right. We can do what's right. You just got to know what right is. So let's sit around the dinner table tonight. Let's have conversations with our youngest children to our oldest and ask them uh, to chime in and ask that important question. What is right? Is it right that we stay away from Russia and China and a war with them? Or is it right uh, that we get involved to uh, come to Ukraine's assistance and aid knowing what the consequences of that are going to be? Potential nuclear war, not to mention all the ground soldiers and the lives that will be lost. And and I don't want to sound, you know, uh, redundant, uh, nor do I want to sound just as if they're words, because when I say them, I truly and genuinely mean them. Seriously, I am praying for the Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. I pray for them. I pray well for them. I seriously mean that. So let's send our prayers because whether you believe in something, a divine power higher than yourself or not, I assure you that when we all start praying the same well wishes prayer for these people in the Ukraine, it matters. It matters. And indeed, it will matter uh, in the energy that we are sending to the Ukrainian people. Because what Russia did was absolutely wrong. How are you going to bomb civilians in an apartment building? That's just murder. That's not a fight. That's not a battle between you and I. That's a straight up murder. And it has a purpose. It has a purpose. But we'll get to that another day. I want to give a shout out to my baby boy, Yaga. <laughs> Victor Cooper, uh, Rip Dundada, how are you? Love you. Thank you for chiming in. Peace and grace, baby. Uh, make sure you catch uh, some of his albums. Go over to his page, uh, Implosion, Implosion, and there you will find Victor Cooper, Rip Dundada, Yaga. Uh, he goes by so many titles. And you'll be able to find and listen to a good portion of his music. The man is brilliant. He's brilliant when it comes to putting music together. And you've got to hear the lyrics. You've got to listen to the words uh, that he is saying on his CDs. All right. So that's Yaga Victor Cooper. Go over to his page right now and check him out. I want to say peace and grace. I love you, Rosemary Elwood. How are you? You have been loyal, uh, just a friend from the very beginning. And Dion Jellybean. Hi, Jellybean. How are you? I love that nickname. I think it's so adorable. I just like to call it Jelly bean, jelly bean. <laughs> I'm Rochelle Wilson here for Make Some Intelligent Noise, uh, the justice movement for equal justice under the law systemically for all people uh, here in the United States of America. I posted something on my Facebook page. Uh, every 30 seconds, there is a melanated person incarcerated, uh, whether it's jail or they are arrested uh, or detained or something to that nature. Uh, they are every 30 seconds somewhere in America, a melanated person is uh, detained. All right. Now, some are let go and it's some, you know, it's a revolving door. You, you gather one group of folks and put them in jail and you let another group of folks out of jail. So it's kind of a revolving door here in America. It's, it's horrible. We are the second high. Well, actually, we're the first, the number one. We have the highest rate of incarceration in America than any other nation in the world. 
America really believes in putting people in prison. Now, I, I don't know what the alternative to, to putting, you know, people who do boo-boos, you make them boo-boo, you got to sit in the timeout chair. I'm not saying that I am opposed to prison, but I think I'm more opposed to some of the laws as well as the judge's accountability for who is going to prison, how long they're going to be in the prison, and how often we're going to keep doing this revolving door. You know, uh, I was watching a show at someone's house the other day, and they were watching a show. It's an old show from way back in the day. I don't even know uh, if they still do it anymore. It was called Cops. And on this show, Cops, you know, bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? And uh, this show is all about the life of a cop during his, uh, on his beat, on his time that he's patrolling, okay? And one of the things that took place were these three little uh, boys, little black boys, out playing, you know, in New York. They're out playing, uh, and they're just trying to have some fun and cool off a little bit in the summertime, playing around in the water and different things. And they pick up some rocks, and they just start throwing rocks. Like, you know, it's not a nice thing to do. It certainly is inappropriate behavior. Rocks can be dangerous. And I totally agree that they should, you know, they've got to be disciplined about throwing rocks. However, the police showed up. In this show, cops, the police showed up and took all three boys in custody and they're going to be facing felony charges because they uh, scratched a man's car. One of the rocks scratched the paint off of a man's car. Is it right to throw the rocks? Absolutely not. Is it necessary to take 10 year old boys and give them felony charges? Really? Is that how we're doing it in America? Well, yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's exactly how they do it right here in America. A 10-year-old boy can get a felony charge because he was playing with rocks. And I'm not trying to downplay it because, again, I've already stated it's not right to throw the rocks. Uh, the mother or the family, you know, now has to pay for the paint on this man's car right, where the rock hit it and it chipped a little piece of the paint, the family has to pay for that. My issue, my concern is a 10-year-old boy having a felony charge. And although that will, you know, when he hits 18, if he does nothing else, if he doesn't throw any more rocks, when he hits 18, those records will be sealed. For the most part, they'll be sealed. But if he does something at 19, I assure you, a judge will look at that record from 18 and below. They're not necessarily supposed to do that, but it doesn't mean that out of human curiosity that the judge won't do that. And, and that can sort of sway the judge's uh, opinion about these little boys. You look at a kid who did something at 10 years old and you automatically say, oh, he's a bad kid, he's a wayward child, blah, 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 and whatever else the judge words, the language the judge might want to use. And there you go. Now you've got a 19-year-old who's got a record because the judge looked at his 10, what he did when he was 10 years old and decided to go ahead and give him some time at age 19. Are you following me? Am I sticking to, is this sticking with you? Who's got me? Give me a call and let me know if you're listening at 844-944-3953. 844-944-3953. Give me a call and let me know what you think about that. All right? 10-year-old boys throwing rocks now have felony charges. What do you think? Uh, I wanted to say one other thing on um, the parts that you can play in saving the planet, and I won't get too far down that road again, but I've got to tell you that India, the Netherlands, and finally America uh, are now recycling glass, those old wine bottles and uh, beer bottles and liquor bottles and all of that sort of thing. They're turning it back into the sand, which is where it came from. B bottles of glass is made out of sand. 
So when you take the bottles and recycle them, turn them back in the sand, you put them back onto our beaches so that they are replenished on the beach. We love to put our toes in the in the sand of the beach. We go to the beach, put a little umbrella up. Well, you need sand to put your umbrella up. So we need to replenish our beaches. So we'll do two things with one, uh, one recycling process. Please pick up the glass, put it in a recycle bin, and let's get that off so it can be turned back into sand. All right, that's you doing your part to save planet Earth. Also wanted to make a, a quick announcement with you. The East Side Pride Recovery Meetings uh, are still taking place every Tuesday from 7 to 8.30. I say 6.45 uh, because we're going to be on time, not off time, your own time. We're going to be on time. So let's say 6.45, 7 o'clock until 8.30 at Central Baptist Church on the corner of 9th and Pine Street, 9th and Pine Street. Central Baptist Church Eastside Pride Recovery Meeting and their philosophy um, and their principles are very simple. The mission of the Eastside Pride Recovery Meeting is to assist individuals in overcoming their addictions in order to gain or maintain control of their lives. We believe that this could lead to acceptance of family responsibilities and participation in resolving problems confronting the community. All right, Eastside Pride Recovery Meetings every Tuesday from 6.45 to 8.30 Central Baptist Church on the corner of 9th and Pine Street. Please show up and participate. If you know someone who needs that help, let's help them, all right? We want to help them. Uh, and so moving forward from there, uh, you know, I, I thought it was interesting as we were talking about Russia and the missiles that have attacked innocent civilians. OK, innocent civilians in an apartment building. Russia sent a missile and just destroyed it, annihilated it, lives were lost. But that brought me to look up something. I wanted to know what is going on with Mr. Evan Gershevitz. He is an a reporter that was in prison at the Lefortovo prison by the Russian government. He was accused of being a spy, of espionage, right? He faces a potential 20 years in car of incarceration in Russia's prison. Now we know that Russia has a long history of hatred for truth seekers uh, and journalists. So now the friends and family of, uh, of Evan Gershevich are, are doing the hashtag, I stand with Evan. So it's hashtag, I stand with Evan. And uh, he's in a Russian prison and uh, accused of espionage when he's really a journalist, a reporter who was doing a story, trying to find the truth of what's going on, and Russia has accused him of, of being a spy, uh, counterintelligence, and he's going to report information back to America, and yada, 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 and so forth and so on. I think it's a little bit crazy, but then when I think of uh, Putin, is it Vladimir Putin? His first name is Vladimir. When I think of him, I think crazy. I think crazy. I think he's crazy. But am I allowed to say that on uh, public radio? I don't know. Uh, I'll say that someone who looks like him is crazy. Yeah, Putin is crazy because he's he's really he's really got some mess going on up his sleeve. And I, I just don't trust him. I do not trust him. Not any further than I can absolutely throw him. And I don't think I could throw him because I don't want to be in his presence. But anyway, moving on from there, uh, I stand with Evan, Evan Gershevitz. Uh, we want to get solidarity for him and get him out of the Russian prison and get him back here in America uh, because this is this is the best place for him to be. Even if he is something in, to do with espionage or he was there to spy, let him serve his prison time in America uh, where he may have a better chance of survival than he would have in a Russian prison. And I just want to try to say the name of that prison again because I'm not sure I got it right the first time. 
Lefortovo. Lefortovo prison. Yeah, that's where he's being held uh, as we speak right now. So moving on from there, going back to the elections, I was watching something and I started doing a little Google research uh, on artificial intelligence, AI, AI. It seems to be the big buzz going around right now. Again, talking about the 2024 elections, uh, not only with Trump and the Trumpster supporters, okay, who might create a, a civil war if things don't work out well in their, in their favor, uh, we anticipate quite a bit of insurrection from them. But who knows? They may surprise us and go home peacefully. Wouldn't that be nice? Just go home peacefully and take it, you know, be a big boy, be a big girl. You didn't win. Go home. Nice and peacefully. But they say uh, in this uh, article that I was reading that artificial intelligence, AI, can now create deep fake content all on its own without the input or the programming of human beings. And this is causing a big concern for our campaign politicians for 2024. Because it, if, if they can do that on their own, artificial intelligence can go in by itself and create this deep fake content. Then who's to say what a human being can do to go in and create a deep fake content about our elected, uh, uh, the people who are running to become elected officials. We got to think about this and artificial intelligence has, uh, you know, it's so on the border. There's so many positives to it. We look at how it can help us in the medical industry. It is helping doctors with surgery, uh, with cancer and, and, and a variety of other ailments to the human body. Uh, brain surgery, AI has been ast just, just amazing, phenomenal in assisting humans with that, in helping us. But when you think of things like an old movie, and I don't know how young you are out there listening, but to any of us who are over the age of 40, we may remember a movie that was called Minority Report, right? Tom Cruise, Minority Report where artificial intelligence sort of took over. It was having its own way. And uh, the only way to get around it was to, uh, to scan your eye retina. That was the only way that you could move uh, or navigate your way through this artificial intelligence was the scanning of the retina of your eye. And, and it was a really scary movie. But when I think of artificial intelligence, uh, what it can do and the positive, I'm ecstatically excited. I'm so happy that it can help our doctors and the medical technology of today. That's fabulous. But allowing it to take over uh, and do what it wants to do without us humans programming it, that can be a little daunting. That can be a little alarming. That raises concerns. And if you're an intelligent thinker uh, and you can go down that line, down that train of thinking, I think you'll agree with me. That's a bit alarming and a bit daunting. Artificial intelligence taking over and doing what it wants to do without human programming. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, you tell me, what do you think about that? What do you think about that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, so you're listening to Rochelle Wilson here at WHGE 95.3 FM, your one and only black owned, black operated news information, advocacy and educational station for the city of Wilmington, perhaps the state of Delaware and certainly the world. You can always find us on the World Wide Web, WHGE 95.3 FM. There you will find us and you can go if you've missed any of our program shows, any of our live broadcasts, you can go to that website and you can tune in and chime in. Uh, I'm not sure if you're able to leave a thought and a comment, but please, if you won't call in and tell us what you're thinking, then leave us a comment on the web. 
We want to know on the website. Just let us know. What are you thinking? How can we improve WHGE? What can we do to be better? How can we serve you better? We serve you with information, advocacy, and education. That's what we do for our black, brown, golden, indigenous people who will chime in, share, let other people know that we're here so that everybody will listen in to 95.3 FM. We are growing. It's a slow process. But when you think about the tortoise and the hare, who won the race? All right. The tortoise won the race because he was steady as he goes. So we are building WHGE one brick at a time. We've got the website up. We're going to have another tower put up shortly. Uh, the antenna uh, will be going up and we'll be able to broadband even further. But until those things are actually manifested, chime in to our website. Chime in to the website and let us know what you think and how can we better serve you, we the people. All right, I'm Rochelle Wilson. Make some intelligent noise. The Justice Movement, as well as Wednesdays, the Political Power Hour. And I've got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the entire month of April, I have been working diligently, staying on it, staying right on it. Uh, for the advocacy of my son, Justin, to be released from incarceration immediately. He's done 15 years for a no injury robbery. It's over. It's time to allow him to come home. Release him, Department of Corrections, Delaware Department of Corrections, Attorney General Kathy Jennings. Release him, Governor John Carney. Release Justin Wilson from prison. It's time. You've taken 15 years of his life. For whatever pennies he may have accrued, by robbing the liquor store, he has paid it back in full with his life. His life, he's paid it back. And trust me when I tell you, Governor John Carney, Attorney General Kathy Jennings, Delaware Department of Corrections, let me assure you of this. You took 15 years of Justin's life to punish him for the crime that he committed at age 21. Underdeveloped and immature and desperate, he committed a crime. But let me assure you, when you incarcerated Justin Wilson, like many other families, you also incarcerated the family, the people that love him, that support him, and that need him, his children. In one way or another, we have all lost, we have all suffered tremendously, because Justin went away. Because you took Justin, you damaged, the, the rippling effects of damage have, have just spread out. It's a rippling effect. So please, if you are listening, and I know that you are, I know that you are, a mother's heart and a strong advocate and a journalist is reaching out to you and saying, let him without sin cast the first stone. Let Justin Wilson go. He's no longer a 21 year old boy. He's now a full grown man, distinguished and honorable and self governing. So let him go, release him. This is my advocacy. And I've been doing this ladies and gentlemen for the entire month of April. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm going to stop. I don't think I'll stop at all. However, I do have to get back to some other responsibilities that are demanding my attention. So as I move forward, I will be multitasking <laughs> as if I were in the carnival somewhere, right? I'll be multitasking, doing several things all at once, but advocating for my son. The release of Justin Wilson will certainly be at the very top of that list. All right. So uh, again, I give you the phone number 844 944 
3953. Please reach out and let us know. What do you think uh, about today's commentary? Have I said anything that you would like to comment on? Peace and grace, Mama. Mama Maya Muna from the Mbaki House. I love you. I honor you. I respect you. Uh, God bless you. I love you, Mama. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Uh, but what do you have to say about today's commentary? We talked about a lot of different things, and I'd like to hear from you. What do you think? If you're a, a part of my Facebook friends and family, I do ask you to chime in. Please let me know what you think about today's comments. Send me a message uh, posted right here on this uh, on this live broadcast. And uh, if you're on my podcasting and you'd like to uh, say something, you're also welcome to let me know what you are thinking. As far as my Patreon uh, app, I am in attempting to uh, engage with those folks who are engaging with me. Uh, I'm not sure what you want. So please engage me. Tell me specifically what is it that you want. Ask a question of me and I'll give you a truthful and honest answer. Just ask the question and you have to do that on my Patreon app. And you can find that uh, anywhere you look up Rochelle Wilson. And it'll lead you right to my Patreon app. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that just about does it for me today. Uh, we've had a little break in the rain. Thank God it's not raining at this exact moment. Uh, forecast is that it's going to start again and it's going to just keep going and going like the Energizer Buddy. It's just going to rain, rain, and rain. So this is a great time to do a little catch up work uh, around the house. Uh, and even if you want to just sit back and binge watch your favorite movies, this is probably the time to do that. But whatever you decide to do with your rainy day uh, or rainy weekend, just remember to give thanks and praise for who you are and that you're here. Do your part to save Mother Earth. Remember, you're doing it for your posterity. Not just yourself, but for your posterity. You are saving planet Earth. All right. So do your part and uh, remember that God loves you. And so too do I. Right. God loves you. And so too do I. Uh, and uh, finally, I will close by saying well behaved women rarely make history. And I do not think at 60 years old that I am going to be well behaved, but rather I'm going to be sexy and sassy and sophisticated and smart at 60. All right. God loves you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you right back here Saturday at one o'clock. WHGE 95.3 FM. Peace and grace. Peace and grace, Facebook friends and family. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please share this report, particularly about saving the planet. It is so important for all of us to do our part um, because it matters to all of us, right? And all of our posterity. We've got to save the planet. Thank you. I love you. God bless you. Be good to yourselves and be good to each other. Peace and grace.